Welcome to worship at Grace United Church of Christ. We are so glad that you could join us this day in worship. Today is a communion Sunday, and so I invite you to prepare your communion elements at home, um, whether that be a piece of bread, a cookie, a cracker, something that you can break and partake in with those who may, may be with you as you worship this day. The other thing you will need is something to drink. Um, traditionally, we use juice or wine. Um, you are welcome to use water or coffee or tea or any, any other kind of juice. We invite you to prepare yourself as we come into a time of God's presence and worship this day. Let us center ourselves in, during the prelude. We begin with our invitation to worship, and our home devotional is available to everyone. Um, all you need to do is to send an email to office, O-F-F-I-C-E, at graceuccwasa.org, and we will make sure that you um, receive a home devotional. Please put home devotional in the subject line. If you would like a home devotional mailed to you, please call the office at 715-845-7051 and leave your name and address and phone number just in case there are any questions. And we will make sure that you are included in our mailing list um, to receive a home devotional at home. I invite you now to participate in whatever way is comfortable for you, whether that's just listening as the words wash over you or to respond in the words that are bolded, or to share in all of the words. There is no wrong way to worship God. Let us share in our invitation to worship. As God's faithful ones, we clothe ourselves in kindness. We give thanks to God, who reveals to us respect and understanding. As God's faithful ones, we bear one another's burdens. We give thanks to God who provides us with assurance 
and strength. As God's faithful ones, the peace of Christ rules in our hearts. We give thanks to God who shows us the way to inclusiveness, peace, and wholeness. Come, let us worship clothed in God's love and presence. When Jesus was born, the angels sang of peace and goodwill to the terrified shepherds. May, may this be the start of a year filled with peace of Christ that overcomes all fear. Let us share greetings with one another online, sharing the peace of Christ. As we come to the lighting of the Christ candle, I invite you to light candles at home as well. A story is told that once long, long ago, a group of magi brought gifts to Jesus, valuable gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We too bring our gifts to Jesus, some tangible and some intangible. As we reach the end of the Christmas season, we think of gifts we wish to take into the new year, the gift of hope. The gift of peace. The gift of joy. The gift of love. The gift of Christ. Reflected in our daily lives, our choices, our actions, our way of living and loving. May these gifts of our faith be brought alive in worship and in us this day. May the gifts of our faith be shared every day of this new year. Amen. Let us pray. You break in, O oh loving God, on this uncertain road we travel, and you change everything. You break in with a call, an invitation, with truth, with new understanding. Gathered in this holy space, you ask us to open ourselves to a new way of seeing the world. You call us to turn and face a future that is balanced, life-giving, and full of mercy and hope. Help us walk this road with you. Help us invite others to join together on this journey of hope and faith. Help us to build a faith family that cherishes open hearts, open senses, open minds. Amen. 
We come to our scripture reading, and we are continuing in um, our, our reading of Luke. And today's scripture reading leads us to Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Now, this is the time after Jesus' birth, and we have skipped ahead approximately 12 years. So let's listen to what is going on now. Now, every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was with in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him sitting in the, in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. They heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? They did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This ends our reading for the day. For those of you who've been with us for a number of years, this carpet is a familiar place. It's one of those places in our church where kids know they are welcome and they are able to play and listen and participate in worship. And we haven't been on this carpet for a while. And it feels like maybe we've been a little bit lost and, and away from what God wants, where God wants us to be. But in essence, wherever we are in our life is where exactly where God wants us to be. And God is with us no matter what. So when you are worried that you might be lost, um, and your parents are probably more worried about you being lost than you are. Um, just know that God is with you and God will help you find where you need to be always, no matter what. And the gifts of the things that we talk about when we're on this carpet, joy and faithfulness, love, goodness and kindness, all the words that are written on this carpet, are there and are with us all the time. God is always with us, always present, and we are never, ever lost with God. And so let's have a quick prayer today. Thank you, God, that you are always present with us, that we are never lost, and we can just reach out wherever we are, and you will be there. Amen. Thanks for joining us for children's time today. Have you ever lost something? Have you ever lost someone? Losing a thing happens to me on a near, near daily basis. The problem is always that the thing is in the place where I last put it, and I do not remember the place where that is. My most often misplaced items are my keys, my debit card, my computer mouse, my purse, the TV remote, mail, a piece of paper with that really important information that I need right now. Um, you get the idea. The older I get, the more often the misplacing happens. Losing, or as I prefer, temporarily misplaced in an undisclosed location, also escalates greatly when I have a number of details going on in my head. Or at least that's the story I try to tell myself. Details. Details get lost in the hubbub of life. Details of getting through a day without misplacing something deserves celebration. 
maybe that's true for you too. Losing a person, though, that's an entirely different category. Losing a child, and even the thought of it, strikes fear in the heart of every parent. I know. Each child of mine has at least one story of getting lost, and some have multiple stories. On a playground, in a store, at a soccer game, while camping, at home playing, you get the idea. Life with three busy, inquisitive sons was never boring, although at times it was exhausting. In our scripture today, Jesus gets lost. He is lost from his parents and causes Mary and Joseph great, a great deal of consternation, and I would venture probably a few gray hairs as well. He is presumed to be with the great crowd of people leaving Jerusalem, with other family in another car, or in this case, on another mule. This is the home alone story of its era. Yet Jesus is not at all concerned that he's been left behind. He's busy, he's engaged, he's got stuff to learn, things to do, questions to ask, things to wonder, places and people to inquire. Just like Kevin McAllister in Home Alone, Jesus takes his circumstances in stride. Jesus is exactly where he needs to be for the coming story to unfold. Now, the other thing that can sometimes happen to us is that we can get lost to ourselves. And it means that in some ways we are lost to God. The things that we kind of confuse about being lost with, to God are not the things that traditionally come to mind. Doubting is not getting lost. Doubting is a part of faith. Doubt is where we come to deepen our faith by leading us to ask more and deeper questions. Wondering is not being lost to God. When we wonder, we think about what is possible. We think about what could be, what might be, what is possible with God. Wondering actually brings us closer to God. Questioning is not getting lost from God either. Questioning is a time and a place where we are able to ask deep questions of meaning for us and to search diligently for answers. What is getting lost from God is when we ignore who and what we are called to be in this world, who God, how God has placed us and given us special gifts in our lives that we can share with others. When we lose that, when we lose our connection to that, that's when we can get lost from God. The thing is, that when we are lost from God, God still knows where we are. It's we that don't know where to look for God. At the beginning of a new year, are you where you need to be for your story to unfold? Are, what changes do you need to make in your life to be ready for the story that is you to unfold in this year? How can you open yourself to what God would have you learn this year? Where is God calling you in the year of our Lord, 2021? As you ponder these questions as this new year begins, may you be blessed. May you be blessed in your not knowing. May you be blessed in your doubts. May you be blessed in your wondering, and may you be blessed, oh so blessed, in your questioning. May you be blessed as you more deeply and trustingly engage with God. May you be blessed in losing yourself to God. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and with all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our world. This day we pray for healing and for wholeness, for vaccines and for cures, for doctors and nurses and first responders who are exhausted. We pray for the lost and the marginalized. May they know your love, your peace, and your comfort. And most especially, may they know and be lifted up so that we may all see and walk with them. For those in unsafe circumstances, in war, in abuse, in trauma, may we pray and may we offer a helping hand, a safe ear, a listening ear, and certainty in life's uncertainty. For those in places of, and feelings unsettled, in questioning, in wondering and in doubt. May we accompany, may we listen, and may we reflect with people in all those unknown places. Knowing that you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we offer these prayers in all the holy names of God and in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This day, we invite you to share a portion of what you have been given, to share a portion of how you are blessed in your life with others who may be in need, who may be in want, who may be lost and alone this day. We ask that you um, are generous in your, in your gifts as we begin a new year of ministry together. Let us pray in dedication of these gifts, these tithes, and these offerings. God of holy mystery, it is a miracle that you can use the finances we offer to participate in your holy work. Strengthen our worship, expand our outreach, and grow our knowledge and service of you with these offerings. Let your will be done through us and this space of worship. Amen. Just a few announcements to share with you. Um, our anti-racism uh, discussion group will be reconvening uh, very soon, and we are uh, inviting new members to join us. If you would like to participate, please contact the church office or um, at, at the contact information through the um, home devotional or um, my own email, which is revjulie at graceuccwasa.org. Um, we will be um, starting again on a Wednesday evening um, towards the end of this month. I invite you to um, join us for Zoom coffee time following uh, this worship service. The link is at the end of your home devotional. Also coming up in February, Grace UCC will be serving at the community suppers. We are in need of some menu suggestions. Um, we will be doing this uh, in a takeout style. Again, just like we did last September, um, it was socially distanced and very safe for all who participated. Um, last fall, we served 81 meals, and I anticipate that we will serve at least that many meals this time. There are some additional um, announcements that are at the end of your home devotional. 
And I invite you to take a peek at those as well. Let us join together as we prepare to sing As With Gladness. We come now to a time of communion, and I invite you to make sure you have your communion elements ready and available for you, a piece of bread, um, something to drink, as we share um, this meal together. I will lead us in our communion liturgy, and you are invited to share as you feel called. Jesus, you set, you invite us to your table freely without condition. We cannot earn a seat at your table, and yet here we are. We come together as individuals, but have now formed a community of believers. Just as the grapes and the grains of wheat are transformed, we are also transformed by your grace and your love. Christ, you have brought us together with your extraordinary presence. We have no words with which to explain or to fully understand. And yet here we are, with open hearts and open hands. As we work together to make this world a new creation, we ask that you continue to transform us. A new year is upon us, a year full of your promise and possibilities. Help us to see ourselves in a new light and fill us with a desire for change. You taught us that God's creation is full of abundance to be shared with everyone. Encourage us to share your love and your gifts with those around us. We have come to this table at your invitation. Once strangers, now family. Together we lift up our voices to give you praise and thanksgiving. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus came so long ago and he shared with us the simple elements of bread and wine. We come together, and he held the bread up, and we come together now doing that same thing. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, and do this in remembrance of me. And so as we come to a time of communion, we remember Christ. And likewise, he took a cup after the meal was over, and he lifted the glass of wine, and he said, This cup represents the new covenant in me. 
when you drink of it, remember me. And we indeed do remember. Let us pray. In this act of sharing a common meal, we ask the Holy Spirit to come to us. At this place, we are able to see, smell, touch, and taste the gifts that our God freely offers to us. And yet, this table is filled not, with, not only with God's gifts to us, but also with our dedications to God for the new year. Fill us, Holy Spirit, with the promise of new possibilities and open our hearts to the new creation here on earth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus reminded us so long ago that as we break this bread and partake of this food, that we do so in remembrance of him. And similarly, as we take our cup, we do so remembering and knowing that Jesus is with us. Let us drink the cup of love and salvation. Please join me in the prayer following communion. Let us pray. You are the people of Christ, the people of God's new creation. You have been claimed by God. Look bravely into the future and see the promise of the new year. See the abundance of God's gifts in the world. Feel the presence of God in the world with you and go forward in God's strength, love, and grace. Amen. Our closing prayer today that we share together. Out into the new year we go, knowing that although the future is uncertain, God is faithful and can be trusted. We go in confidence. We go into the new year knowing that while we cannot control everything around us, we can work with God for justice and peace in our part of the world. We go into the new year knowing that while the world is troubled and challenged, we can look to the life of Jesus to guide us. We go into the new year knowing that there will be times when we feel lost. We have God's spirit with us and within us to guide us and bring us home. Thanks be to God always loving, always faithful, always welcoming. Amen. And in benediction, go into this new year in hope and in courage. Go into this new year actively seeking God's will. Go into this new year walking with others in faith seeking to do Christ's work wherever we are. Amen. Thank you for joining us this day at Grace United Church of Christ, and may you be blessed with this worship service. Thanks again. <laughs>